Redneck Garage. Well, today we're going off the beaten path a little bit. I got side projects all over the place, and this is one of them. My buddy Devin has a 86 Jeep CJ, and uh, it came from Alaska. It had been up there. Uh, really a great, solid old truck. Not too much rust. It's got a little bit on the bottom corners. Um, we may be painting that, that this summer. However, he can't get the dang thing to run. A couple years ago, he put a remanufactured carburetor on it, and it's never run right since. Now, as far as the uh, 83, 86, right in that era, carburetors on the Jeeps, I thought that we could go ahead and take a look at his and then discuss the common problems with that and the early YJs had the same issues because of the Carter two-barrel piece of crap carburetor they put on these things that was computer controlled and there was issues all across the board with that. So let's just take a look at his and then we'll discuss the rest of it. There it is. Rolled out of the garage, the old Jeep CJ. Got a little paint issue. Got a straight six in it, which is good. There's cobwebs, so that's bad. <laughs> it's got a mechanical fuel pump, and it looks new, so I think it's probably just lost its prime. Is my guess on it, so we'll take a look. See what's up with it. But it could be pretty nice. Needs a paint job, maybe some new flares. Definitely needs some kind of top. I guess they drive it mostly with a bikini. The paint looks like crap. Clear coat's coming off. Alright, let's go find him. Tire's low too. Look at that. Oh, lordy. Get that dog away from me. I don't like dogs. I'm afraid of dogs. There's Devin. Look at this, man. You talk about redneck. Little duct tape holding the battery onto the IntelliCode here. That's pitiful. Yeah. What's up with that? It is pretty bad. Huh? Too cheap to buy a piece of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the Jeep? It it's got will... a new fuel pump. I oh, know. It's got a new fuel pump and filter looks pretty new too. Yeah. Just won't start? Won't start. Did you pour gas down in it? I did. Maybe you flooded it. No, it'll it'll burn off whatever's in there, and that's about it. But it, will it run for a minute? Yeah, what, for as long as it's got gas in there. Huh. It's almost like it's either fuel line gummed up, or... I mean, it could be totally bad carburetor, I don't know. What do you think? Hello? Well, it could oh. be the carburetor if it sat for a while. Did you beat on it? If the float stuck, if it was like empty and the float stuck, sometimes the float, the needle can get stuck down. Yeah. I did try that once. That is a rebuilt carburetor. I'm going to look down there and see if we got any fuel. That's too hard to film. Alright, so we're going to see if we get any fuel. Since I don't have a gauge, we're just going to hook the fuel filter here. Crank it over and see if we get any fuel coming out. And that'll tell us one way or the other. Yep. Yeah, we got fuel coming out, so. All right, Dev, what do you think? Time to replace the carburetor. Yeah. Pretty much these electronic carbs on the CJs and the early YJs also before they went to the fuel injection just sucked. They're terrible. And this thing's been monkeyed around with about three or four different shops. And it's actually squirting a little bit of gas out, but it's messed up. So I'm going to see if we can maybe find an older style carb without all the electronic garbage on it. Um, do a little research on it. Because my old CJ5 that I had had just a manual carb and it worked great. I never had any issues with it. But when they were trying to meet emissions requirements and gas mileage, they put these electronic ones on with all the garbage and gook. And there's issues with them. It may just be a bad rebuild, too. It says holiday remanufacturing. So, I don't know. But I think we could probably replace that with a standard one. Or, if he falls into a bunch of money, we could put an electronic fuel injection in and that would end all this crap. Be the way to go. Yeah. Or if it just ran. Oh, well, that'd be the way to go. Yeah, that'd be the way to go, too. All right, so we're going to look into that. But it's a, you know, pretty decent, solid old Jeep. He needs to put air in the tire. It's almost flat. Needs a paint job. Needs a paint job, for sure. 
He could sell it. I don't know who could do that paint job. I don't, who do you think could do a paint job? I don't know. I've seen some pretty good paint jobs lately. I, I don't know. <laughs> May, May, better call Mako. <laughs> better call Mako. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a little research. That is one rough running Jeep, I can tell you that. Now, when I look at it, uh, it could be a couple different things, but because the computer control carburetor, um, the idle, everything's adjusted, you can't really adjust it because the computer's going to take over. So there is a procedure that we're going to talk about that you can do to eliminate all of that. And they say that you can only use it on off-road vehicles because it's illegal to do it. You know what? This is an 86 Jeep that's running like crap. So how much emissions do you think are coming out of the tailpipe when we ran it the other day? Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about the procedure, the new carburetor, and everything else we're going to do with it. Okay, so I know the carburetor's just jacked up. There's been so many people working on it, twisting and turning and trying to get it adjusted, and I think a lot of them didn't really understand how the whole system works, and that's what you have to know when you're working on these crappy Carter carburetors. Um, here's a picture of the carburetor that's on Devin's Jeep. It's called a Carter BB&D, and you can see that there's a stepper motor on the back, and there's all kinds of electronics. Uh, it communicates with the ECM, which adjusts the timing, which... Um, the vacuum, if it's off, can cause it to mess up. So when you try to adjust this carburetor, if there's anything that's messing up, it'll actually cause the needles that go in and out to be unadjusted. And that's why you have such a hard time with it um, taking off or it, they won't idle. And, you know, they're just a bunch of crap. The BB&D actually stands for Ball and Ball Duel. Ball and Ball was a company that Carter originally bought out. Carter was the manufacturer for the carburetors for all the old uh, Jeeps that were used during World War II, even the wa waterproof ones, so that's pretty cool. But this design that AMC came out with to try to meet emission controls and, and lower emissions is a piece of crap. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple different things. Um, Devin's ordered a Weber uh, carburetor conversion kit. It comes with a new Weber carb. Uh, I told him which one to get. That's going to be coming in this week. And we're going to do another bypass. That's going to be in a later video. And that basically what you're doing is you're disconnecting the computer to the carburetor and it doesn't alter the timing because of the carburetor and what kind of settings the carburetor is giving off. So basically it puts it back to a very early CJ and it, you can get them to run really, really well with that on the old 258 4.2 liter. So great! That, so that's all coming up as far as this goes. I found it really fascinating to dwell into how these carburetors were made, how garbagey they were, and the ways to fix it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to be fixing Jevin's Jeep, and we're going to have our fingers crossed whether he can pass <laughs> emissions or not. Now, in Tennessee, it's just a sniffer test. They don't actually do a physical inspection, so it doesn't really matter what you have on there as long as your CO2 and your hydrocarbons are right. You're good to go. So I'm pretty excited to be able to do that for Devin. I'm hoping if you've got a CJ or you've got an older Jeep like a YJ that has this uh, carburetor on it and you can't get it idle and you're having it jump and miss and all kinds of garbage, a lot of it's because of this junky carb. And if we go through these steps, maybe you'll be able to get it running better. Awesome! Keep watching because we're going to get this thing running like a top. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Keep turning wrenches.